Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, it was a story three decades in the making. We take a look back at the 1978 volleyball team and talk with the players and their head coach about their magical run to the national title. Plus, all the highlights of the week right now on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life. Hello and welcome to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got a very special show for you today, including a look back at one of the greatest teams in UCF history, the 1978 UCF volleyball team, which won a national championship 30 years ago. But first, we're going to get to some more recent volleyball history with this year's edition of the team taking on two conference opponents at home in Marshall and East Carolina. The Knights kicked off alumni weekend against the thundering herd of Marshall, but it was UCF making plenty of noise on Friday night. Aaron Campbell tied a career high with 22 kills, and Stephanie Cern attacked on 17 kills of her own as UCF picked up a victory over Marshall in five sets. It was the Knights' third conference win on the season, and a big one it was over one of Conference USA's semifinalists from last year. Plenty of drama on Sunday in another conference match with East Carolina. The Knights fell down two games to none and were facing match point in the third, but they stormed back to win a remarkable third set and finished off the Pirates in five. This time it was Stephanie Cerna who led the way with 20 kills and Janine Williams tallied 19 as the Knights improved their record to 12 and six overall and four and one in the league. The women's soccer team also had their two-game conference homestand. On Friday night, they dispatched Marshall in short order. 4-0 the final score there. Courtney Whitten tallied a pair of goals for the Knights, while Amanda Martirana and Emily Maynard also got on the board. The Knights outshot Marshall 24-9 and route to their fourth win over the Herd in as many tries in the history of the series. So that led to another big conference matchup on Sunday with East Carolina. Things looked to be going the Pirates' way until the 89th minute when Lauren Halbert got credit for this goal that tied the game up at one goal apiece. Eleni Reyes was solid in goal yet again for UCF, especially in extra time as she preserved the one-all draw keeping the Knights unbeaten in Conference USA play. Meanwhile, the men's soccer team kicked off the week with a tough road loss to a very good Charlotte team. Four to nothing was the score in that one, but the Knights bounced back nicely on Saturday at Marshall. As freshman Kyle McEntee hit for a pair of goals, and the Knights stopped the herd in its tracks three to one. Back at home, the football team got a huge lift from Joe Burnett, who set the school's all-time career record for interceptions on Saturday with his 14th. The Knights defeated SMU 31-17 at Bright House Network Stadium for their first conference win of 2008. Elsewhere on the road, the women's golf team with a nice effort in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, as they finished 11th in the Tar Heel Invitational. Marika Lendl was UCF's top finisher once again, as she tied for 17th overall. Cross Country cleaned up in Titusville at the FLRunners.com Invitational on Saturday. They took first place overall. The Knights had five of the top nine individual finishers, and Chantiel Blackburn posted the second best five pay time in school history in taking top individual honors. And Brock Saiki was UCF's top singles player at the DeNovo Invitational in Tulsa, Oklahoma over the weekend as he posted a three-set victory over Francois Van Imp of Nebraska on Saturday. So a great week for UCF sports. Coming up next, we'll take a look back at a great year in UCF sports, 1978, and the record-setting volleyball team from back then won a national championship. We'll have a look back when UCF Sports Night returns. Hey fans, check out men's soccer this Saturday night at the UCF Soccer Complex as the Knights take on conference opponent UAB. After the game, the players will stick around to sign autographs, so don't miss it. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment.
Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. 30 years ago, we saw one of the greatest teams in UCF history. The 1978 FTU volleyball team went 55-0 that year en route to an AIAW National Championship. Recently, the university celebrated the 30th anniversary of that incredible run. And we'll show you that wonderful ceremony in a few moments. But first, let's take a quick look back at that incredible season. We had recruits from all over, and we never quite won a championship, state championships, but never a, um, a national championship. So you've come so close so many years that the team was hungry. They were ready for a win. We had a couple outstanding, outstanding players on that team, so we felt that this was going to be our year. Ms. Mack had scheduled us to just go up the whole east coast of the United States. And that's where we, was, we were kicking everybody's butt, was on the, the east coast of the United States. They just wanted more. You could see the hunger in their eyes. They really pushed each other at practice and challenged each other for positions. With every tournament we played, you know, we'd add a little bit more strategy, defense, offense. And of course, then we had the setback when, you know, Julie was killed. She was awesome and she brought our team together and it was a tragedy to the team. But Miss Mack had turned everything around and made this tragedy a positive. Uh, we all played for her for that year. You know, she taught us a lot about life and death and that we had to move on. And we got our strength from her. And we, we were unstoppable after that. Coach McDaniel was a great coach. She was, um, she was tough, but she was fair and she was very much the motivator. Lucy McDaniel was also one of the um, people who brought Title IX out. We relished the opportunity to finally have a chance to compete. A lot of us didn't have the opportunity in middle school, high schools. We didn't have the women's sports or girls' sports at that time. And we just took it one step at a time, and she would always emphasize everything we did, and she'd add a little bit more to it. It was just pure excitement. Everybody was excited and, come on, let's get to the next round and the next round and the next round. Everybody gets the announcement that they want to change the name of the school. Oh, we didn't like that at all. We had been FTU for a long, long time. We finally agreed that we would start the tournament with FTU and we would have to end it with UCF. It was awesome. The gym was packed. That was exciting, but it wasn't pressure. It was something you wanted. You wanted it and you go for it, and there's no holding back. I have a very vivid memory of kicking Riverside, California's butt, and they were the uh, semi-match, that, and we beat them. Everyone played very, very hard. Um, the crowd was behind us. The Hawaii game was intense, and, uh, we, you know, we made a lot of different adjustments, you know, but, um, you know, we really didn't have any doubt, I don't think. The whole gym erupted. Oh my gosh, the girls were all over the place jumping in each other's arms, running for the court. We were going to lift Miss Mack up, but we didn't want to hurt her. And uh, Laura lifted her way up, you know, and everything. It was just awesome at that point. I remember uh, Miss Mack just being uh, so happy. Amazing, 55 and 0, who would have ever thought it? Especially with the situation 22 and 0, losing an assistant coach. And I think people were crying, you know, we were all upset that you know, that we had lost somebody, but we hoped that she was happy that, you know, we had won, you know, for her. Then the pressure was off, but it's a feeling that you want everyone to feel. I wish I could relive all that. It was so fast. I definitely wish I could relive it all. You always have that bond as a national championship because you accomplished something that was a goal and that you did it without losing, you know, 55 and 0, and it was special. And you always have those memories. It's phenomenal. It's a feeling that lasts forever. Don't go away. When we return, we'll have a look back at that emotional ceremony at the volleyball game against Marshall. Plus, we'll sit down for a few words with UCF's incredible head coach from 1978, Lucy McDaniel. That's next when UCF Sports Night returns. Bam. 
Providence, here's a look at upcoming night's action this week. Brought to you by UCFAthletics.com, the official site for UCF Varsity Sports. UCF Sports Night returns in a moment. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Last week in the volleyball game against Marshall, the University of Central Florida honored their 1978 National Championship volleyball team with a very special ceremony. Here now a look at a moment three decades in the making. Well, you know what's kind of ironic is that I didn't even know that we had a national championship when I took this job and came in from USC and I'm looking at the rough draft of the media guide and I look and I see this 1978 national championship team and I called Jessica Rio up and I said, do we have a national championship team? And she had to look it up and Sarah, of course, confirmed that we did have a national championship team and I said, we have to do something because I, if I don't know about it and recruits don't know about it and fans don't know about it, we have to do something so we know about it. We have to celebrate that kind of excellence in our sport. I saw an alumni UCF Volleyball, new coaches want to have an alumni weekend. So I basically write and say, does this include the formative years, you know, the years before NCAA, to, you know, do you realize that there was a national championship team? We targeted the Stanford match where we were bringing in the six-time national champions to be the night that we would honor our own national championship team. And then a massive search, like you said, the, trying to find the archives. Volleyball was good about having the names of the girls, but 30 years, names have changed, everybody's different places, but we were persistent, and I think that we kept trying. The Alumni Association helped look to track some people, word of mouth, track some people. When they bring the banner down for, me, for us, I think it's gonna be um, very emotional, really. Um, I'm excited to see the banner come down. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna look like. Uh, you know, I think it's great for Miss Mack. I think that she deserves the recognition from the school. Wow, what a moment at the volleyball venue on Friday night. And joining me now is the woman of the hour, the former head coach of UCF Volleyball and champion coach from 1978, Lucy McDaniel. What an honor, pleasure to see you. Pleasure to meet you. I have to go back and looking back at this, at this 1978 team, tell me how you brought all of these players together to form this team that went 55 and 0. Volleyball's a head game. And if you can get into their head that nobody can beat them unless they can put an extra player on the court, and you get them believing that, and they did, and so, and they were so close knit that nobody could beat them. And they had to come into my office, they came into my office every day, and they would be the score. Uh, 20-0, 25-0, but at the beginning of the season, when I was being interviewed by the Rhino Sentinel, I said, we're going to win the national championship, and that was before the practice even, and Torchy Clark, the basketball coach, said, you can't say that. You have to say, well, maybe we'll win 50% of them, and 25 
kind of as a toss up. And I said, Torchy, that's why you don't win championships because you don't let your people believe in you. So, tell me, you guys go 55 and 0, right? Win the national championship, and it was it was such a magical season. Looking back at you know through the archives and everything, and to see this building now as it is, uh -huh. and the banner going up last night. Tell me what an experience that was like for you. Uh, that was something because I know we had to fight for time at the other gym with the bat women's basketball, the men's basketball, volleyball, everything else. And this is unbelievable that they have a gymnasium just for volleyball. And it's just beautiful. But tears came to my eyes last night when they lowered that banner. And it brought back so many beautiful memories. And now I guess I'm a UCF fan. <laughs> it's always good to hear, and it's an honor that's so well-deserved. Coach, thank you so much for taking time for us today. You're Congratulations. Very, and can I say one thing? Absolutely. All of this would never have come about if it hadn't been for Winnie Dodgen. She contacted people, she emailed them, she phoned, she must have spent six months getting it together. So I can't take the credit for this at all. It all goes to Winnie. Well, a lot of credit is due to you for that 55-0 and 0 season and helping establish UCF Volleyball, celebrating their 30th anniversary of the 1978 55-0 championship team. Coach Lucy McDaniel, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we'll put a bow on things. We've got our top three plays of the week. Plus, we'll sit down with athletic director Keith Tribble for our night talk session. Stick around. We're back after this. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Time now for the return of our Night's Talk segment with Athletic Director Keith Tribble. And with the volleyball team off to a great start to the 2008 season, our question is, what are your expectations for the volleyball program? You know, as I, when I went to uh, look for a volleyball coach and we had the uh, honor of, of, of getting down to two or three people and you know, Coach Dejanet came to us and kept coming back his name, and, and uh, I met with him. Uh, the first thing that I noticed what, was that he was committed to the student athlete. And that's the first and foremost. I mean, the, the coach has to be committed to the student athlete. Uh, because, you know, our job is to make sure that they have an opportunity to graduate and make sure they have an opportunity to compete at the highest level. And he demonstrated those two things. But we know that it takes time to build a program. So what what I expect out of the volleyball program is really the same thing that coach, the coach expects. Expects to have the team that's ba built on basic fundamentals, the foundation is strong, uh, recruiting great student athletes who obviously love the sport, but love being here at UCF, and grow the program where it becomes a solid program and not just having a great season. So I think, uh, uh, and I really, you know, there's no indication that, th that this will not happen, but I guarantee you that uh, just by being around coach, I think he'll do that. One thing you can also expect is a lot of excitement in our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Number three, Joe Burnett put on a show against SMU on Saturday, picking up his 14th career interception. That is a new career record at UCF. Congratulations to Joe on setting that new mark. Play number two belongs to Emily Maynard of the women's soccer team as she pulls out the turnaround special for her first career goal. Nice move as she helps the Knights to a 4-0 win over Marshall on Friday. And play number one, 30 years in the making as the 1978 volleyball team saw their championship banner unveiled during alumni weekend. As UCF paid tribute to their remarkable 55-0 national championship season on Friday night, an incredible memory for all who were there to witness it. And those are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. 
Time now for a look at what's happening in the week ahead. The men's soccer team is at home for a pair of games this week. They take on Florida International at 7 on Wednesday, and then follow that up with autograph night against UAB on Saturday. Women's soccer is on the road for a pair of games. They head out to El Paso for a matchup with UTEP on Friday, and then head up north to face Colorado College on Sunday. The volleyball team is at home once again this weekend for a couple of contests. They take on the Memphis Tigers on Friday night, followed by another conference match with UAB on Sunday afternoon. Both tennis teams will be near campus this week. They're participating in the CL Varner Classic in Winter Park, which runs Friday through Sunday. The women's golf team is heading up to Knoxville, Tennessee this week for the Mercedes-Benz Championship. That event goes from Friday through Sunday as well. Meanwhile, their counterparts with the men's golf team are in Palm Springs, California for the prestige at PGA West. That tournament will go from Monday through Tuesday. And cross country is close to home on Saturday for the Disney Classic in Lake Buena Vista. The football team steps out of conference for its first ever matchup with the Miami Hurricanes this Saturday. Kickoff at Dolphin Stadium down south is set for 345, and you can catch the game on TV on ESPNU, or as always, on the radio at AM740 WQTM. And as always, you can catch the Knights on the air Sunday at noon on West 2 with UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. That show airs again Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. on Sun Sports and throughout the week on UCF TV. Also, it's your chance to talk football with Coach on the George O'Leary Call-In Show, live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes, Monday night at 7 p.m. on AM 540 WFLA. And as always, for all the latest news and scores from all UCF sports, check us out on the web at ucfathletics.com, your home for UCF varsity sports 24-7. And you can check out our show anytime online. Just visit us at ucf.tv. We want to pass along some special thanks to Winnie Dodgen, also April Anderson from the University Archives Department, and assistant coach Sam Schweisky for all of their help with today's show. That's it for us here on UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon saying thanks for watching and go Knights. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Centex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics.